Ain't no party like a Catholic party because a Catholic party don't stop young adults. Ain't All right, I'm opening the floodgates. Party because a Catholic party don't stop young adults. Let's go. Uh, so thank you for your patience. Go ahead and grab a water, um, coffee, tea, you know what I mean? Whatever. Oh, matter of fact, it is the church's birthday. So <coughs> if you want to diet or not, it don't matter. Get a piece of cake out. Tell y'all, get a piece of cake, get a cupcake out. Like it's the church's birthday. So if you want to get a cake and hang out with us like that, that'd be awesome too. I have a program that I am super excited about. Super excited about because again, we have uh, speakers that are pre-recorded. We're gonna have some live talks and we're gonna have some time for you to fellowship with other young adults. We wanna give you a space so that you can connect, so that you can have some dialogue. So whether you're an introvert, extrovert, or maybe in between, the church needs you now, now more than ever. And just like the Holy Spirit came down today and everyone started speaking in their native tongue, we are called to do the same. So no matter what your mission is, no matter what your ministry looks like, you are called, you are called today, being filled with the Holy Spirit, you are called today to go and make disciples of all nations that, that if you just say the word that you don't have to be connected in a church or in a gathering space um, obviously we love being together um, in person I, I'm, I'm, I'm a very physical touch person I love giving hugs and high fives and all that stuff but um, I think that there's there's something really to be said about like Jesus said the man of greatest faith um, was this man who believed just just say the word and over the uh, over over the there was no Wi-Fi back then but but Jesus just just said the word and at that moment his son was healed and I think there's something to be said about that of just like even though we might be separated by walls and by by rooms but um but the Holy Spirit is alive and well inside of us and all around us so. Um, yeah, just was going to start with that. I'm going to do a song. Um, maybe some of you guys know it. It's um, by some friends of mine called Brian and Katie. Come here. Come here. Let us know that, you know, um, you're feeling the Holy Spirit right now in this moment. And when I was thinking about the idea of Pentecost, uh, one scripture that really spoke to me comes from the book of John, chapter 21. And this is where Jesus is on the shore and the disciples were fishing all night. And all night long, they didn't catch anything. Right, and they, they see someone from, from, you know, from the distance and Jesus is like, did you catch anything? And Simon Peter's like, no. And Jesus says, cast your net over to the right side of the boat. And so with complete trust, Simon Peter puts the net and he just like, puts it over to the right side of the boat. And automatically in, in chapter, um, in verse 11, he catches 153 large fish. Now, something to think about when I think about Pentecost and I think about our theme today, celebrating the Holy Spirit, is this idea that Jesus didn't say, oh, come bring it in. You're not a good fisherman. It's not for you. Jesus didn't say, you know, go a little further. All Jesus said was just make the adjustment, right? And with complete trust, they just took the net and put it on the other side of the boat. And he caught 153 large fish. Now, when I was looking at what the 153 meant, what it meant was that Greek zoologists cataloged 153 different kinds of fish, which meant they had one of every kind. And when I think about that, the net that they used to catch one of every kind, that means that each and every one of us here today watching that's in this, that's at this gathering, we all have a net and it's up to us to work that net. It's up to us to work that net because there are fish out there that need to be caught, that need to be saved. So we need to make these disciples. So when I think about our gifts and the Holy Spirit giving us the gifts and celebrating the Holy Spirit today, like each and every one of you have a net that needs to be used, that needs to be worked, and we just gotta work that net a little bit. And when I think about working the net, I also think I say it backwards, network. We got a network. So today, we're actually going to set up small networking groups, aha, networking groups, so you can work the net with a small group today. Shout out to DJ Bernal, Joe Melendrez, John B., Chris Mueller for just uh, getting us started. And now we're actually going to start with our young adult who's going to share her experience with the Holy Spirit. And I'd like to introduce to you from the Diocese of Reno, Nevada, Jamie. 
Hi guys, Jamie Maranon, and I'm born and raised in Reno, Nevada. I'm raised Catholic. I did all my confirmation at my church, St. Rose of Lima in Reno. Before I was 16, my confirmation, I felt the call the Holy Spirit and come into my life. And this was inspired by my cousin giving me an email saying how his confirmation, he felt the Holy Spirit come into his life. And I don't know about you, but I'm pretty busy with everything else I do as I'm a grad student full time. I'm still working full time in this pandemic. And with that on top of everything else, I also serve at the church sometimes, but I haven't done that lately. I'm a proclaimer, I'm a Eucharist minister. I've helped out with religious education, but uh, the biggest one that was my call during the church was my helping out with the, my youth band after my confirmation where I was involved heavily with my director and also as a singer, production, even tech. So you can see there's a full plate. <laughs> even through my high school life and my college life, and now I'm in my young adult life that I'm still continuing my journey with the Holy Spirit and God. But I also, during this time, I had a call to help people, but I wasn't really sure what that call was. And a little bit about me, my middle name is Therese, after St. Teresa of Elisu, and as it was defined as one who harvests. And keep that in mind as I go move on to the next part of my witness talk. During this time, I felt my, the Holy Spirit come to me in different ways. It was guiding me to other people, especially with the ministry and choir, with the young adults and the youth that I interact with. However, this call definitely got amplified in my experience of World Youth Day 2019. I was in a situation that was not my normal situation, and it was definitely took me out of my comfort zone. And granted that we're, there was only four of us on this, on, from our diocese on this trip, and we were blended with other groups, different ages of young adults, especially youth, teenagers. We, I felt that call there where I was gathered and the Holy Spirit enlightened me that, you know, your call is to help other people along your journey. You have your journey set, but there's more. You're guided along the way. So come, I come home post World Youth Day, and there was, through this whole time, I realized a lot of people have been guiding me through this path for a while, from my choir director, my youth minister, and my diocesan young adult minister too. And this, this is what we're here, because the journey, it's pretty amazing together, but it, we also gotta remember, it's always not the same. So overall, the Holy Spirit has led me through my call of helping people. And one thing I pointed out, I would like to point out today is during Bishop Barron's talk on, the, on celebrating Pentecost, his homily said, the spirit of love that God is always a unifying force. And I think that's where I'm at today. And this is what I like to call my sending, start the sending forth of the prayer of the witness talk. Name Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit, be with our family, make us living witnesses to God's love and light to a world so desperately in need of it. Empower us, strengthen us, fill us with the boldness and joy as we look to share Christ's goodness and truth with the world. Mother Mary, pray that we can see Christ's face in all we encounter this week. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Jamie. Do me a favor and just type an amen in the chat to shout out Jamie. Matter of fact, I got something for you, girl. And here is the focus of this networking group. So, one, What's one takeaway from the video or the witness talk that you had? And two, how have you seen, experienced, or felt the Holy Spirit present and activated in your life? For example, you know, the church gives the Holy Spirit so many different names. But I know for myself, one thing that the Holy Spirit always does for me, it gives me strength. I'm huge on taking care of my physical health and working out. And days where I just need to get that extra rep in, days where I need to push a little bit longer, go a little bit faster, whatever it might be, I always will make the sign of the cross because I'm calling on that Holy Spirit 
to show up. And many times the Holy Spirit also will, will guide me and, and just guide my feet, guide my hands. So thinking about your life, what are some ways that you have seen the Holy Spirit show up for you? One of the most beautiful things about the Holy Spirit is that it's going to come in so many ways, shapes and forms to help you out. And so for our next presenter, we're actually going to share, he's actually going to share with you how the Holy Spirit has been a, big, a bringer of peace for him. So I want to introduce Joe Nufable from the Diocese of Oakland. Right on. What's up, guys? Thanks for being here. Uh, thanks for hopping on this. Um, so, yeah, my name is Joseph Nufable, and I'm from the Diocese of Oakland. And uh, I grew up kind of being like that typical youth ministry kid. Uh, so I went to all the church events and all that, and uh, I got really involved as a youth leader. And uh, I was involved in a uh, lay ecclesial movement called, uh, or charismatic movement also called uh, Couples for Christ. Well, I wasn't a couple, my parents were, but I was in Youth for Christ. And uh, I, I just grew up always having my parents go to prayer meetings and uh, they dragged me along and I met a lot of my friends from there. Um, fast forward, I, I ended up becoming a youth minister. I'm a director of youth and young adult ministry at Holy Spirit Church in Fremont. Um, and when I first came on board, there wasn't much to offer. There was just a standard confirmation program and the kids just got their sacraments and they left. It was a good sacrament factory, right? Uh, and, and maybe that's what our experience is for the church. But when I got here, I had a lot of this experience. I had a lot of, um, you know, I was so on fire with my faith and I didn't just want the kids to get those sacraments and then go. I wanted them to be super involved as well. And so I really worked on how do we evangelize them? How do we get parents involved? How do we get uh, the, the priests to, to show their desire to get our young people involved? And how do you get our young people to see that the priests uh, want them to take part in leadership at our parish? And um, I wanted middle school ministry to grow. And so I uh, just been working at that and working at that and, and just being obedient to the spirit and listening. Um, and I faced burnout after burnout after burnout because of that. Right. I got so um, just dependent on what I knew and uh, maintained a prayer life as well. Uh, but I got myself to this point where um, you know, I, I was even, you know, losing some friends because I was so motivated in work. And um, yeah, I, I gave so much of my heart to youth ministry that I began to see a lot of um, other areas in my life beginning to deteriorate. And so I really needed to work on that. And praise God, I really got to work on that. Um, and, um, you know, my life is, is working well and youth ministry has really grown and it's super fruitful. And we see a lot of the youth and young adults, um, you know, being in discipleship with one another and, and they're like leading other people to Christ and they're bringing people to church. Uh, and even in a time of shelter in place, uh, there's a lot of Zoom meetings. We're doing youth ministry online. Uh, we had adoration online with our young people. So uh, super active youth ministry at here at Holy Spirit. Um, a couple of, and maybe about a year ago, I began to feel a restlessness in my heart. Despite all this fruitfulness, I felt really restless. And I felt like God was, was trying to get me to make a move. And I wasn't sure. My, my love for youth ministry and my love for the teens and my love for my community was still there. So I got really uncomfortable, right? Because the thought of me making a move... Um, just didn't sit well with me because I really enjoyed my work uh, and we were making, we were making really good uh, progress and we got really good traction. But um, again, I, I, I really had to be obedient. I really had to listen to what the Holy Spirit was doing in my life. Um, so I began to, to feel like I had to ask Jesus, you know, where was this restlessness coming from? I had to listen to the Holy Spirit. Um, where are you leading me then? If I'm, not, if I'm not supposed to stay here, where are you leading me? So some opportunities came up and in the midst of shelter in place, those opportunities um, left me, you know? Uh, so some of these places that I was uh, applying to, some of these places that um, opened up opportunities for working uh, because of shelter in place, uh, they were doing budget cuts and I, those jobs didn't, turn, uh, didn't work out, right? Um, but I still felt like, um, at peace with the fact that my time at Holy Spirit was coming to a close. And again, that was difficult. I still felt like I had to move forward. And, um, 
I, I realized through all this that peace was was never a circumstance. It was never just, you know, making sure everything was ready to go and I felt confidently moving forward. Peace was um, allowing myself to rest in God's presence, allowing me to be held by by my Father, uh, whose mercy and goodness is new for me every day. Uh, peace was. Uh, the reassurance from Christ that uh, uh, he's walking beside me, no matter, you know, the uncertainty of where I'm going, right? So I began to fix my heart that that peace was never a circumstance, but it was just resting with God, resting in the Trinity. Um, and so, you know, despite the uncomfort of what was happening next, um, began to talk to the team, began to talk to our parish and just beginning the transition of hiring a new youth minister and everyone was on board. Everyone was ready to go. And I, I felt so delighted because a lot of the young adults that I've been working with that were teens when they first, when I first started here at Holy Spirit, they were just like, Joe, we're just excited to be your friend. You know, not just that you're our youth minister, but we're going to be in discipleship with you still. And we want to walk towards heaven with you still. And it blew me away because it's like, man, Lord, like he places people in my life. And I thought, you know, you were going to take away more because you took away my comfort. You're going to take away everything else. And the Lord blessed a lot more. Right. And um, again, just really resting in that peace. Um, and, and it was really grace. It was really grace that uh that helped me begin to plan a transition and so we got a new youth minister hired and she's dope we're so excited the team's ready to work with her um and it all worked out for for my life as well as we're you know um today is actually my last sunday at holy spirit tomorrow is a day i'm bringing in a new youth minister and uh she's gonna be moving into this office and we're just gonna prep and plan and envision what the next years of holy spirit's gonna look like and i'm super excited about that you know and um you know praise god that uh you know my wife got a really big raise and we've just been talking about what our life together is gonna look like after you know me being a youth minister despite how much joy it brought me we just thought it'd be a really good move for me to take a break for a little bit uh recharge and, and focus on full-time study because uh, the Lord is just like, you know, eat your vegetables, Joe, you know, stay hungry. The opportunities are coming, but I want you to abide deeper in me. I want you to grow, you know, uh, academically, and, and I want you to grow in your intelligence. I want you to be equipped uh, to continue to work in the church. Um, but he also just like gave me this reassurance that like your relationships in the church won't disappear. You know, you, you're still going to be walking with these people and I, I look now like where my life is at and how much has just changed in this past year is, you know, because I was resting in God's presence, I really allowed him to just bless everything, bless my marriage, you know, bless, you know, and I'm not much of a prosperity gospel person. I'm not like, I, you know, I denounce that. Right. But I, I didn't anticipate the finance thing to come in, but I, I just, I really, I'm really grateful and it's a privilege um, that that happened to Janessa and my wife and I, but uh, I consider it a blessing and I don't want to waste that opportunity. And so that's why uh, we decided to use this big, you know, financial, you know, increase in our life to, for me to study, you know, full time. And, and, you know, the, I really saw that God's vision for my life, at least as a young adult, like starting to fulfill, fulfill itself in me, you know, um, my work at Holy Spirit's being fulfilled. My trust in him is starting to fulfill. Um, my whole like serving and burnout thing was beginning to like reach its fulfillment. And, and, and I'm, I'm reaching a new like um, time of, of a new season of maturing in my life. And um, I'm so glad that it's been marked by peace, right? Um, that I could move forward, not looking for the circumstance, but looking for where God is, is working in my life. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm still so young. I'm just, I'm 28. And I'm grateful that the Lord revealed all of those things in my life right now. Because, uh, you know, like, as, as my wife and I begin to start, you know, building our family and making new moves, like, I hope that um, we can continue to walk in that peace, right? Um, and, and the Lord has offered his shalom in our life right? It's not just a piece of like, oh, there's no war, or there's no conflict, but a piece that has truly transformed our hearts. And I invite all of you, you know, today to hear that shalom, right? 
to not just look at what's going on in the world and like, man, um, I really need peace to affect all those things, but first it's got to affect us so we can begin to affect our environments and affect, you know, the people who may not feel that peace, right? So uh, today, hear Christ Shalom, hear him wish you and grant you peace. Uh, he wants peace to be with you, um, not just your surroundings, but with your heart. Uh, and as he did in my life, uh, I pray he does it in yours. Thank you. Peace be with you guys. Let's just let God steer. So here's what we're going to do now. We're going to send you back into your networking group again, so you can work that net. And here's what we would actually like you to do for this session. And this is going to be, again, uh, we have one more uh, network session. So we're going to ask you to pray together to the Holy Spirit. And in a moment, please do me a favor and take a screenshot of these directions. And then the next page, we're going to have you take a screenshot of that as well. So you have the prayer with you. And then we're also going to ask you to think about two of the fruits of the Holy Spirit that you would like to grow in. Okay. And so here is the prayer on the left-hand side and here are the fruits of the Holy Spirit on the other. So we'd like you to, as a group, to pray the Holy Spirit together, pray the Holy Spirit prayer together, and then thinking about two of the fruits of the Holy Spirit that you want to get stronger in, that you want to grow in, right? Is it love? Is it joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, or self-control, right? So taking a moment of honesty for yourself, where would you like to let God steer more? Say, you can truly be at peace, like uh, Brother Joe was saying. And so just a little bit about Brother Isaiah. He is originally here from the Bay Area. He's part of the Franciscans of the Renewal now in New York. So he made that video just for us today. Um, again, cut. Oh man, there's just so much goodness there. Quick, we just want to shout out all of the presenters today, right? So we had like Joe Melendres, DJ, um, DJ Bernal from San Antonio, Texas. We had John from... Um, Steubenville, Ohio, Chris Mueller, we had Deepu, we had so many presenters, so we want to thank you as we get ready to queue up this last video, um, last presentation on the Holy Spirit, well, then we're going to uh, end with our two-part prayer session, um, and again, we just want to thank you for being with us today, so we're going to go ahead and we are going to queue up our last video, and it's another Bay Area uh, hero in my eyes anyways, and let's give it up for Sean Bryan, aka the Papal Ninja. As we continue to call on the Holy Spirit and as we get ready to, to close our program today, I want to invite one of our ministry team, Jana, who's going to do a litany of the Holy Spirit for us. Lord God, we just thank you. We thank you and we love you so much. Holy Spirit, we honor you and we adore you. We thank you for being present with us today. God, we thank you that you are present in us, that you are present in our church, you are present in our world. Holy Spirit, we thank you for the work that you're doing in our hearts and the work that you're going to continue doing in our hearts. Yeah, God, I thank you for the relationships that you've given us today, the relationships that you're building in us. God, I thank you for the work that you're doing all across these homes, all across the globe. Yeah, and Holy Spirit, we just say, come. We thank you for this chance on Pentecost to come together as church. And we say, Holy Spirit, come. We welcome you. We welcome you in greater measure. Holy Spirit, come even more. We invite your increased presence with us right now. We invite you to come and rest upon us right now as we prepare to leave this gathering and go back to our worlds. God, we invite your presence to come and rest upon us that when we walk away, you would be with us even more than we've experienced you before, that you would manifest yourself even more than we've seen before. Yeah, Holy Spirit, we need you. We love you. And we thank you for who you are and what you do. And so we pray, Holy Spirit, divine counselor, we adore you as our true God, with God the Father and God the Son. We worship you and unite ourselves to the adoration that you receive from the angels and the saints. We give you our hearts and offer our thanksgiving for all of your ceaseless grace. Giver of all supernatural gifts, we ask you to increase your presence in our lives and infuse us with the gifts of your spirit. Grant us the gift of fear of the Lord. That we may walk in steadfast awe and reverence of you. Grant us the gift of piety that we may overflow with affection for you, following your divine inspirations and serving others with honor and humility. 
Grant us the gift of fortitude. That we may endure and overcome courageously in the face of affliction and hardship. Grant us the gift of knowledge. That, that we, we may know, know your ways and your thoughts and grow in deeper connection with you. Grant us the gift of understanding. That we may gain clarity to grasp truth and apprehend your divine mysteries. Grant us the gift of counsel. That we may seek first your kingdom and make choices that further the advancement of your will on earth. Grant us the gift of wisdom. That we may be perfectly calibrated to your heavenly perspective and stay fixed on you and the things that last forever. Mark us, Lord, as your disciples and animate us in all things with your spirit. Amen. In the name of the Father, Amen. And the, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We just want to thank you for being with us today and huge shout outs and prayers for all of our ministry team. So now to end our day, our second part of our prayers, we're going to actually get you back with your small group and your networking group so that you can do some intercessory prayer with each other praying over each other for the things that they've asked for, for the Holy Spirit, for things that you've shared today, things that maybe you picked on that you picked up on that. You say, you know what? I want to pray for that person. So now you're going to have an opportunity to close our day, close this event, close this gathering by praying with each other, for each other, and over each other.